Shakayla Diamond and today I am back with episode 2 of Breaking Fashion News. Um, as I said before, Breaking Fashion News is a new segment that I'm bringing to my channel that will highlight popular news within the fashion industry. It'll be a place for people to come who are interested in what's going on in fashion but they may not necessarily know where to look or might not want to look too hard so I'm bringing it to you to where it's already on my channel. So make sure that you're subscribed and that your post notifications are on so this can be your one-stop shop for all of your fashion needs. Um, so on this episode of Breaking Fashion News, like all the others, it will be all news from the previous week. So it will be very fresh and very new, which is why I'm dropping the videos once a week. Um, so let's get right into the news. So the first news is that Farfetch is doing a capsule collection with Balenciaga. Um, and it's going to include kids wear, men's wear, and women's wear. Um, the collection is described as being an eco-focused collection that takes streetwear pieces and re-images them in exclusive colors and fabrics, according to Kovatour. Um, so the collection is embodying like what I saw was a bunch of like hoodies and t-shirts that has like, you know, Balenciaga and Farfetch all over it and also just creating streetwear into something different trying to give it to a different audience because Balenciaga is a streetwear brand but Farfetch has many different brands so they have a wider audience you'll find some very dressy and high fashion pieces on Farfetch so it'll kind of just broaden that horizon for you know the Balenciaga customer and the um, Farfetch customer um so in the ad that I saw on Covertour it was one of the, um, they show one of the most stylish New York City families, they said, and they had them style the clothes, say what their favorite pieces were, and it was the, um, couple, I don't want to pronounce their name wrong, so it was Rajni Jaquace and David Dowd, I believe that's their name, and they posed with their, uh, children, and a lot of the pieces, the pieces look really good, um, and the prices for the pieces range from um, $280 for a pair of kids joggers to $3,400 for a caftan dress, which is one of the pieces that uh, the mom of the family was wearing. Um, so yeah, they're coming out with the collection. And it kind of took a lot of people by surprise because these are two kind of like, I won't say very different brands because Farfetch, like I said, they sell different brands. It's a place for you to get like your high fashion needs in one place, but it does appeal to two different types of audience and Farfetch is definitely a wider audience than Balenciaga. So it's going to be interesting to see how these pieces are uh, taken by you know customers and consumers but yeah that's our first set of news um next we have bathing ape is going to be creating a store in russia um they're going to have an exclusive uh like pop-up shop in a retail store in moscow called i don't want to mispronounce it to soon it's spelled t-s-u-m i guess it's a department store over in moscow and um bathing ape is going to have a pop-up shop in there they released the news of them creating this pop-up shop by putting a um bait camouflage logo wrap bentley inside the uh department store window and that's how people were like, oh my God, they're bringing, you know, a bathing ape here. Bathing ape is really particular on the retail spaces that they have and, you know, the places that they choose to take them, especially, you know, internationally and in different states and things like that. So this is going to be very interesting to see. They say that the um, clothing pieces and the assortment of merchandise that's going to be in the store is going to be very similar to the flagship in London and New York. Um, so I think it's going to be really interesting. And the pop-up shop was designed by uh, Ricardo Tortejo. 
Ricardo Tortato. Um, he's the uh, fashion director for the men's wear and e-commerce uh, at the store. And also the BAPE team. So the BAPE team and um, Ricardo will be designing the pop-up shop. Um, and it should just be very interesting. I think that people get very excited when a store that has never been brought to where they are is brought there. So I think it'll do really good. And they say that they, the Bay team says that they want to make sure that everything remains brand focused. And that, you know, each store still is cohesive with what the brand stands for and what it looks like in every other location. Um, so the next news is that Canada Goose has launched a social entrepreneurship pro program called Project ATI. Some of these words are very hard to pronounce, but it's spelled A-T-I-A-I. -I. Um, but yeah, they're creating a social entrepreneurship program. And it's going to celebrate the craftsmanship of the indigenous Inuit people, the original parkrun makers. So they're pretty much paying homage to the people who are responsible for the types of coats that they come out with. Um, it's going to be a one-of-a-kind collection of pieces handcrafted by seamstresses from the northern communities of Canada because the company was created in, I believe, Toronto. But overall, this collection um, is in reference to Canada Goose's commitment to Canada's northern regions. So I guess they're trying to make sure that Although they create these very expensive, very nice quality coats, they want to show that these coats come from a particular culture in a particular area of where they were created at. So I think that that's always great when you pay homage to where your designs or where your thoughts are actually inspired from rather than trying to take on something as if it was your own idea. Um, but the next news is that Billy Porter from Pose um, is now named the New York Fashion Week's men's um, ambassador. So he's going to be the ambassador for Fashion Week, which is happening um, next week, this upcoming week actually, and I will be going on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, he is the ambassador for New York Fashion Week men's. And I think that that's pretty amazing. It's especially amazing to see a black man be the ambassador for New York Fashion Week. So I think that it'll be great. Um, he has a, lo a true love for fashion. Um, and I think it'll be great to see how it goes, how he interacts at the events. He seems very lively and he just seems like a very fun person. So I think that it'll be great to bring a little bit something different to the New York Fashion Week atmosphere. Um, so next, last but not least, is that... Actually, this is not last, second to last, but um, Roberto Cavalli, the brand, is going up for sale. Um, I believe that the bids were closing either, they will be closing in a few days or they closed a few days ago. Um, but Roberto Cavalli, Cavalli is being sold again and Philip Plin is very interested in purchasing the brand because he says that he... Uh, enjoys who Roberto Cavalli is and he feels like his personal brand is very similar to Roberto Cavalli's so he wants the brand he wants to take it on and he wants to leave his mark on it um the brand was actually last sold in 2015 I believe yeah it was sold in 2015 by two I don't want to pronounce this wrong either Clesiandra or Clesidra Clasidra is what it's called, the uh, holding company Clasidra. Um, and at this point, Roberto Cavalli, the actual designer, um, only owns 10% of the brand still. And when it was sold in 2015, it was sold for 380 million euros. Um, between 380 million euros and 400 million euros. Um, but yeah, right now, uh, Philip Plain is in the top 10 interested parties to purchase the brand. So we should see how it goes. I couldn't find out how much it's selling for right now. But, I mean, if it sold for 400 million euros the first time, we'll, I mean, it can only go up from there. Um, nine times out of 10. Um, but also, another interested party, but I don't, I don't think they 
made a bid but they were interested in purchasing the brand is Renzo Rosso OTB Group which is the parent company to Diesel and Mason Margiela um, they were interested but like I said they they did not submit a bid and also Tapestry who owns Coach Stuart Weisman and um, Kate Spade they were interested as well but they also did not make a bid so it's looking like Philip Plan is you know going to be the person who was able to purchase it and for it to be on women's wear daily you know it's a very high possibility that he might be you know number one running to uh, acquire the brand um but yeah like i said roberto cavalli himself only owns 10 percent of the actual brand they say he wants to fade out of the fashion industry um i always find it kind of sad when when you have to sell your brand for things like not even sell well sell most of your ownership of your brand for things like investments or you know money or things like that for someone to finance what you love because a lot of the time when you let other people in to finance your company your creative thought kind of washes away you have so many more people now saying what can be done or what can't be done you can't always make you know those executive decisions especially when your your stake in the company is is small um but yeah i mean if he wants to fade out of the fashion industry then i guess it wasn't his best interest to sell the brand originally but you know I, it's going to be good to, if philip plan does acquire the brand it's going to be good to see someone who has a similar style to who roberto cavalli is acquire it and we'll see you know what direction the brand goes in and if it's good for the brand because i think a lot of people well a lot of a lot of the time when brands are so or brands get a new ceo that is not cohesive with what the brand identity and foundation is the brand goes whoop, straight down in the gutter because they don't have the best interests of that brand they want to bring on new change but the new change isn't isn't it doesn't go with what the brand stands for or what the brand looks like for example uh Heidi Slamane being at being creative director at Celine it to me it doesn't work because Heidi has a very different creative eye than what Celine stands for so I feel like when you bring in a new creative director or a new, new CEO or you uh, sell a brand to someone different, it goes away from what that brand was originally known for and the look that that brand has, you know, put its stamp on and has created and that people know it for. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. But sometimes when you get people who are not, who don't even correlate with the brand at all, it, it's never good. So... I think it, it'll be fine. He has a style, a similar style to Roberto Cavalli as a as the person. So we'll see how he does it. And he said that he's always loved the brand. So I can't see him wanting to change it so much that it's not, you can't even identify it as what the brand has been in the past. Um, but now, last but not least, for real this time, is... Olivia, uh, for the spring um, 2019 ad campaign for Balmain, Cara Delevingne, the model, is in it with Olivier. Um, the pictures look really good. In one um, picture, it's Olivier and Cara, and um, he, he's behind her. She's nude in both photos. She's nude. And in one of the photos with Olivier and her together, he's covering up her breasts with his hands. Um, and he said that he got the the um he got the creative idea for it from a lot of like 90s um album covers and things like that like janet's album cover or it was either album cover or magazine whichever i'll put a picture probably but um she did the same thing um but yeah he said that he got the reference for it or the idea for it from a lot of 90s album covers and with her choosing him choosing her to be in the ad campaign he wanted to show i'm going to read his words exactly he wanted to show the relationship between two skin tones of one black or mixed race and one white because as you know um olivier is a person of color he's black mixed with black but he can identify as black if that's what he likes because that's what he is black and um Cara de la Vigne, she's white so he wanted to show how both of those can come together and 
along those lines but yes i hope that you enjoyed this week's news i hope that it was very interesting to you i was trying so hard to find some stuff that was interesting because fashion was a little bit dry this week fashion isn't always uh, a lot going on it's not always a whole lot of big news sometimes it is very dry i do feel like it's been very dry for a while except for you know like the once in a while big news but i hope that you guys enjoyed the video make sure that you subscribe and that you turn on your post notifications so that you get notified every time i upload a video and thank you for watching and i'll see y'all in the next one peace out